Hello and welcome to the results overview for Ujjivan Finance for Q3 FY19. We will look at the salient points on the company's performance in this quarter. Note that this is an abridged version of the results analysis. For detailed analysis, please visit investing.amitkirti.com. Let us start with the P&L numbers. The graph on the left depicts the revenue growth as well as expense growth. The revenue grew at a decent pace of 33.4%. The growth in expenses was in tandem with the growth in revenue. FY19 has turned out to be a better year compared to the past two years. The company has managed to show decent revenue growth in all the three quarters for this year. The graph on the right shows the growth in PAT and EPS. PAT grew by 54% to 45.2 crores. The EPS followed the PAT growth and was seen at 3.7. Overall, the profit growth was very good and this performance streak was a continuation from Q1 and Q2. Let us now try to break up the expenses. The major component of expenses is the finance cost. The graph on the left shows the finance cost. Finance cost grew at a rather modest rate of 29.2%. The graph on the right hand side shows the other items that make up the expenses. Employee expenses saw an increase by about 47%. This should be on account of the converse, conversion of asset centers to SFBs that need hiring specialized people. There was a shopping 62.5% rise, rise in other expenses, which again is due to the SFB branch conversion. Hopefully by Q1 of FY20, we should see these numbers stabilize. The positive aspect can be seen in the third term, which is the provisioning and write-offs. In percentage terms, there was a substantial drop of close to 76% in provisioning. The company is finally confident that there won't be any major repayment issues in future. Let us now look at two more numbers that were a little disappointing. The graph on the left shows the cost to income for Q3 FY19 and we compare it with Q3 FY18. We also look at the numbers for Q2 and Q1 of FY19. The cost to income continues to remain high at about 77.7% .7 for Q3. That was again a disappointment. The management attributes this to the cost incurred in SFP branch conversions and as noted, the management is confident that from Q1 of FY20, the cost to income should start to come down. Even the return on equity continues to disappoint. For Q3 FY19, the ROE was about 9.7%, which is pathetic. Cost of capital in India is about 15% and an ROE of less than 15% is a loss to the shareholders. I hope the company can improve its ROE to come good on the confidence that shareholders have in the company. Let us now look at the NPAs. The graph on the left shows the NPA numbers for Q3 FY19 versus Q3 FY18. There is a substantial drop in gross NPA and net NPA. The gross NPA has dropped from a high of 4.24% to 1.4% and the net NPA has dropped from 1.04% to 0.3%. The graph on the right hand side shows the trend in gross NPA and net NPA over the past 7 quarters. It is clear that there has been a drop in NPA over the past 7 quarters. The demonetization daemon has been put to rest. The two graphs here is all about the change in stance from cautious to being aggressive. The graph on the left shows the employee strength. For all of FY18, the employee strength stagnated around 10,800 to 11,000. But from Q1 of FY19, there is a hiring spree with 1,000 employees being hired every quarter. The same can be observed about customer base. In the entire FY18, the company seemed to be very cautious and had minimal change in customer base. 
which was stagnating around 37 lakhs. But starting Q1, there has been a noticeable rise in customer base. We should see the impact of this renewed confidence starting Q4 FY19. The net interest margin for any company is sensitive to the borrowing costs. Higher the borrowing costs, lower would be the net interest margin. The graph on the left shows that in Q3 FY19, the borrowing cost was 8.5%. Notice the drop in borrowing cost over the past six quarters. There has been a drop of 110 basis points. The borrowing cost in turn is dependent on the borrowing profile. The graph on the right hand side shows the borrowing profile of the company. Here is too much of information in the graph. I would like you to concentrate on two items to begin with. The item in dark green and the item in maroon. Dark green shows the deposit growth. Over the past six quarters, the company has substantially increased its deposit profile and as of Q3 FY19, close to 58% of the borrowing is via the deposits. The item on the maroon shows the term loans. Note the substantial drop in term loans. These term loans are the deeds of the past when, an, when as an MFI, Ujjivan had no choice but to rely on bank term loans. Now being a bank, it has the luxury of taking deposits, hence the substantial drop in terms in term loans to just 2%. I would now like you to concentrate on the third term, which is marked in light brown color, which is the refinancing facility. There are many government agencies which are mandated to distribute money for specific causes. For example, NHB distributes money to be lent to home borrowers who are economically weaker. Ujjivan has managed to increase the refinancing to about 34%. Hence, as of Q3 FY19, the major sources of borrowing are the deposit and the refinancing facilities. And my guess is that over the next few quarters, the company will rely predominantly on deposits. Let us now look at the composition of loan book. We will try to compare the loan book composition between Q3 FY19 and Q3 FY18. The graph on the left shows the loan book composition for Q3 FY19. Clearly, the MFI loans or the group loans from the form the major chunk at 7,267 crores. The graph on the right hand side shows the loan book composition as of Q3 FY18. The loan book is still tilted in favor of group loans, but one can see the gradual rise in MSC and home loans. Between Q3 FY19 and Q3 FY18, Home loans grew by 193% and MSC loans grew by 176%. Let us now look at the loan disbursement growth. The graph on the left shows growth in disbursement under group loans. There was a growth of about 21% seen in group loans. The graph on the right hand side shows the growth in the other loan categories. Micro-individual loans saw a growth of 53% to 202 crores. The noteworthy point is the loan disbursement for micro-small enterprises and housing. MSC loan disbursement grew by about 140% to 134 crores. The housing segment shows a disbursement growth of about 125% to 157 crores. From Q3 FY19, the company has added a new category called Rural Loan. The company disbursed 47 crores under this category. Let us now wrap the discussion with a quick summary. Revenue grew at 33% which was very good. PAT and EPS grew at close to 54% which was amazing. Loan disbursement was modest at about 20%. The NPAs have recovered in the past one year but GNPA at 1.4% is still high. Cost to income continues to be high, which is disappointing. Management sees the cost to income coming down for Q1 FY20. Overall, this was a very decent quarter. The company is back on the growth path to show and on its way to achieve its goal of reaching growth of 30 to 35%. Please note that this was an abridged version of the analysis. Please visit investing.amitkirti.com for detailed analysis of Ujjivan Finance. 
the detailed analysis further covers details on the NIM growth, detailed look at the expenses, segment wise NPAs, quarter on quarter analysis of the borrowing profile, details on ticket size etc. We will also look at the detailed breakup of the deposit accounts at Uju and SFP branches. Thanks for listening.